Let's ring the doorbell to the House of Sound over here. That's even a melodic doorbell. Hey, Ricky. Carlo, come on in. Thank you so much, sir. It all out. Awesome. Look at this. So this is the House of Sound. This is the House of Sound. We're about to see a lot of really cool stuff. Very awesome. Wow. It's even got a garage in here. Yeah, so we've got one of the uh, Jeep Grand Wagoneers that has the Macintosh MX-1375 system in it. Oh, man. Um, which is pretty remarkable in and of itself. It's all Macintosh technology and the amplifiers and the speakers. So it's really, you are you are driving around with a Macintosh in that thing. Very cool. So thank you so much for uh, for inviting us over here, and uh, let's uh, let's have a look around. Yeah, let's take a look. You got it. Hey, Secrets readers, this is uh, Carlo LaRosso, Editor-in-Chief of Secrets of Home Theater and Hi-Fi. Thank you for joining us. And we are here in lovely New York City <laughs> um, at the House of Sound, the famous House of Sound. And uh, it is home to a number of brands from the Macintosh Group. And we're here with Ricky Miranda. Ricky, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming by. It's great and to see you again. It's great to see you too, sir. And um, we've heard so much about this about this space, yeah. about this this building, um, and what you guys do here, and uh, we would love to get a a, a tour of uh, and a little more of a breakdown and more detail of what what you guys have going on here. Yeah, well, right now we're in our primary reference system, our ballroom, and this is really the the big dog of what we do. Everything in right. here is the best thing that either Macintosh or Sonus Faber builds to do the thing that we're using it for. So on the electronics side, we have a couple of different sources. We have the Macintosh MT-10 for when we're doing it of our analog plane. Okay. Um, obviously our reference level uh, turntable. On the digital side, we're using the MCD-12000 with this system. So we're streaming into that using the onboard DAC there. We also have the TV hooked into it for when we do things like we had an Oscars party recently, right, right. Um, which is pretty fun in here. Um, and then obviously CDs and SACDs in there. Nice. Both of those go to a C12000 uh, reference preamp, mm -hmm. and then out to what you see behind us, a bevy of amplifiers. The big stack of Mac, basically. Yeah, <laughs> so if we're looking down from the top, the 611 and the current configuration is just here for show. Um, but then below that, we actually start the working system. We've got an MC1.25K mm -hmm. powering the tower of the Supremas, and that's being fed by the tube output of the C12000. And then below that is the brand new MC 2.1 KW 2000 watt mono block. So okay. a lot of improvements over its uh, predecessor, one of which I think is the coolest one is it looks a lot cooler now. I really love that you can see some of the internal componentry. I don't know that I've ever seen a Mac that doesn't look cool to some degree, but yeah, this is, this I, is something yeah, else. I, th I think you're right there, um, but it's, it's a really cool system. And then that is powering the subwoofers of the Supremas, um, which, Things are just are big, obscene, big, crazy. crazy. Oh my gosh! I mean, you know, forgive me for saying so, but man alive, this is like one heck of a setup. Holy smokes! And yeah, the Sonus Faber Supremas in all our glory, right here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. A lot of really fine glass finished walnut and carbon fiber glory and leather fronts and a bevy of drivers on here. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, I always said that uh, I always. I always felt that the AIDA was like my favorite Sonus Faber speaker. And then when I saw these announced at, at CES and took a close look at them, I was like, holy smokes, okay, I think they just, that, that, that might change. <laughs> yeah, Livio and his team uh, seem to know what they're doing when it comes to design no, sir. and acoustics. <laughs> and um, it's it's really otherworldly sitting in this room and listening to these, you know, it's, I've had quite a few people, even in the week that we've been here, that these have been here, come through here and just sit in that sweet spot and mm -hmm. just lose themselves in a smile. Oh, I it's, would, it's pretty otherworldly. I would expect nothing less. I mean, and you were, and, and when we were talking earlier, you were saying that um, 
through the crossover, these are being run full, the towers are being run full range. Yeah, yes. So the crossover itself is only in the signal chain for the subwoofers. For the subwoofers, right, right. So we are going full range from the tube output of the C12000 into the 1.25K. Gotcha. And then into the tower. So it is receiving a full range signal. Um, you can actually see some of what's going on on the sides. We've got little the little windows where you right, see the crossovers for the little, tower itself. Little eye candy windows. Yeah. 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 And one of one of the features that's on a lot of the the newer Sonos Harbor speakers. I I love as an engineering nerd. And then the crossover is being fed by the solid state output, and then going gotcha. into the 2.1 kW and the subwoofer. Um, so the crossover is only working on the subwoofer and the subwoofer. configuration that we have it right now. So where would you would you say that the roll off is uh, on on the towers and and where the the subs come in or do we? I don't know specifically on this, okay. and it's it's tunable mm -hmm. um, to to a certain extent. Right. So th there's some fine tuning that can be done for that based on the room. Understood. There's a number of things that you could do. I, we were talking earlier. As a as an engineering nerd, I really love the fact that the voice of Sonos Harbor on this is also right. mechanically actuated to change the timing for your room. And for those to, for jumping, just for those who don't know, when when Ricky's referred to the voice of Sonos Harbor, he means this uh, main section here that covers the uh, the tweeters and the mid range on on all of Sonos Harbor speakers. There's that module, for yeah. lack of a better word, that's that's called the voice of Sonos Harbor. So just wanted to clear that up, but. Please continue. Yeah, it, it's really the, the, the core of what Sonos Harbor is trying to do. It, it's a very common, a, a, as you mentioned, common feature among all of the speakers. Um, when you get down into a bookshelf, you're essentially just having a voice of Sonos Faber. Right. And then as you get into towers, you expand out into mid-range and, and, and woofers. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you also see the phase plug that came around in the uh, Amati G5s. Yeah. Uh, another really cool feature to mechanically affect the timing of the speaker without having to do anything electronically. That is such um, like beautiful design geekery there. It's just like, it's, yeah. it's so awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then obviously all of the carbon fiber, um, both in the cabinets and on the woofers. Yeah, I don't know that I've seen, I don't know that I've seen as much carbon fiber on a lot of, a lot of high-end cars these days. <laughs> I mean, wow, it's just so nice. Yeah, we were, we were talking earlier, it's really kind of like going to the Lamborghini factory, right? You have all of this carbon fiber on here, then the fine woods and the leathers and, you know, all of the, the essentially in this, we're looking at the engine bay with the crossovers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's just a, just a stunning, stunning piece of work. I mean, all of it together. And yeah, the, just the, the subwoofers, that totem monumentum. Base, it's just that's just so striking, and that, those carbon fiber drivers, and oh my gosh! And one of the things that has honestly impressed me a lot about these speakers is that it's not just about going really, really loud and really, really low. Mm -hmm. You know, solo vocal pieces, violins, everything. It just it's giving you the most perfect example of what you want to hear. Out of I, I do not doubt. Not down. But um, I, I believe uh, Livio had mentioned that uh, when uh, when someone who's lucky enough to order one of these things, uh, one of these setups, orders it, uh, it includes like a trip to Italy to uh, see it being manufactured yeah. and, uh, and, and uh, customize it to a certain degree and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I don't have a full list of the customization options yet, but there are there are a few customization options. Obviously, there's. The traditional Sonos Faber has walnut, winge, and things like that. I think there's some other colors there. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other really cool factors of that purchase is that, you know, we talked about the tuning to the room specifically, the crossover controls and the mechanical controls on the back of this speaker. The technicians who build the speakers for you also will fly out to your home when you do that, sit with you, play your music, make sure that it's absolutely perfect for your space as well. We're not just shipping you a box and saying have fun. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that you get the experience that we built them for. Outstanding. Yeah, I, yeah, I would, I would expect nothing less. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, well, thank you so much for for taking us through uh, through the nuts and bolts of these uh, these glorious speakers. And uh, yeah, let's maybe sit down and take a listen. Yeah, let's do it. All right. I'm here at the House of Sound in New York with David Massioni, Global marketing director exactly of the Macintosh group so David thank you so much for for having us here thank today. you for being here yeah no our pleasure Ed. I mean we uh, I mean we there's no better place around here than I think <laughs> next that, to the fireplace yeah next to the fireplace <laughs> and next to these gorgeous figures that I think we'd want to be, and this Macintosh equipment that we'd want to be at um, 
But yeah, this is this, this is my my first visit to the House of Sound, and um, maybe I know this is the the, the sort of the, the second iteration of it. Correct. Um, Maybe if you could give us a sort of a little bit of background of sort of the reason for basically its being of, sure. of, of why it's why it exists. It's quite unique, right, in our industry for a brand or why not brands to create a home to host their customers, partners, mm -hmm. and fans. Uh, we decided to do this in late 2015, early 2016 because we started to understand that the most impactful way for people to really get uh, introduce what we do mm -hmm. is to listen to it. Right. And so you can do, as a marketer, I do campaigns, I do digital strategies, I do PR, mm -hmm. uh, but there is no better impact than to show someone what Macintosh is by simply putting them in front of a product mm -hmm. and letting them do their own discovery. Giving them the full experience. Basically. Exactly, exactly. Right. And so that's how the concept started. Uh, the previous location was located in Soho, and mm -hmm. this new, not new anymore since September, right? But this, this, this location, we're now in Chelsea, New York, and the goal is the same. Make sure that anyone who wants to come and listen to the best audio products ever made mm -hmm. can simply get an appointment, meet with uh, Ricky, mm -hmm. uh, who I think you met right before, oh, yeah. who is our tour and audio manager, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, spend an hour and a half to two hours navigating the house, discovering what we do best mm -hmm. at different level, and also mm -hmm. uh, seeing our home theater downstairs. And so it's kind of a, it's working simply because seeing the people coming yeah. uh, on a daily basis, having a great time, and you know, serves them a glass of wine, gets them a cup of coffee, and uh, hopefully they're going to feel inspired and had a good day. A very, a very civilized experience. It is, uh, it, it is, it is. Oh it man, now it's, uh, it, it's. I mean, just being here today and experiencing it for for myself and for ourselves, um, it's it's quite uh, it's quite the setup, and and it definitely gets. It definitely gets the intent across for sure. Yeah, and and, and you know, it's kind of a, something we notice a lot is normally when you want to listen to high-end audio, you of course have to go to a retailer. And because a retailer business nature is to have multiple brands and multiple setups, mm -hmm. I think it, it might be hard sometimes for a consumer to really visualize themselves into the perfect environment because there's many brands and many components. Absolutely. Here, as you may have noticed, of course you have a lot of audio, mm -hmm. but it's merged into a design and I would say kind of an experience element where audio is a part of the experience, mm -hmm. as much as the furniture is a yeah. part of the experience, the people working here are a part of the experience, the wine selection is a part of experience, and we understand that audio for many people it's not going to be their entire life, but it's going to be one of the pleasure, one of the most important pleasures they have in their life. Right. 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 I mean, that's the, I think the big takeaway for me being here and, and being through each of the rooms now, uh, including the home, th that crazy home theater. Nice. Uh, yeah. Geez, yeah. <laughs> um, well, the whole experience, I mean, it doesn't feel like an amusement park. I mean, it, it, it's, it's an, or a spectacle per se. It mm -hmm. feels like you're in a, uh, like a, a series of, you know, very, um, you know, very nice rooms in a home mm -hmm. or, in, in, or in, in, in some different homes yeah. uh, that are, you know, places, spaces people would actually live in. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, some crazy overly, overly treated or whatever thing. It's, it's a nice, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice pad. That's our goal. That's yeah. our goal. And that's why you can see arts on the wall. That's why we take very good care of our plants. We want it to be a home for people to come and enjoy Simply put, uh, we have an hospitality element, uh, kind of, you know, again, if you want something here, mm -hmm. we're going to make sure that we can serve you this glass of wine and uh, you to have a great time. Ah, incredibly civilized. That's awesome. <laughs> civilized. Mission, mission accomplished, sir. Mission accomplished. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you again for, for the invitation and thank you so much for, for the Anytime. time. Anytime. And I look forward to, to have you back and very soon. Just say the word. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, David. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Carlo. You bet. So we talk about the heritage of Macintosh being on live stages right. back to, to Woodstock, the Grateful Dead's touring rig, mm -hmm. and then how this idea became what evolved into the XRT series of speakers. Right. Hey everyone, so we are continuing from the House of Sound in New York City, and Ricky has brought us into the jazz room, as it's called, and uh, it's just very 
as we can tell by these chairs, it's very comfy and loungy and very, very nice. But uh, there's also some uh, amazing sounding equipment in this room. Ricky? So yeah, so this in this room, we focus on the distributed brands within the group. So okay. we're using Rotel and Michi for electronics. So we have a few different things we can swap back and forth in, on, depending on what's going on with the tour. Mm -hmm. um, so you see the top of the rack there, we have the RES 5000 streamer. Sitting next to that is the Project RPM9 Carbon. Gotcha. Um, that table is running in a fully balanced configuration, going oh, out right. into the okay. Phonobox RS below it. Mm -hmm. Um, both of those components are going into the P5 Series 2 that you see next to that. Gotcha. That's the Michi preamp, Very really world-class nice. world machine mm -hmm. and uh, beautiful to look at as well. Oh, yeah. Um, below that, you'll see the Michi S5 stereo power amp. So we're pumping out 800 watts Class wow. AB uh, at 4 ohms into these Olympica Nova 3s. Man. Um, Next to that, you have the DT6000 and, and RA6000, the Diamond Series Electronics. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Those are pr pretty fun as well. Uh, really the top of what Rotel does under the Rotel name itself before you get into the Michi stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember Darren, Darren North was talking about that, about those um, last time uh, we when we were in uh, Florida. Like, Florida Audio yeah, Show. Yeah, yeah we, right. we, we talked about those. That was mm -hmm. pretty soon after the release of those and the S14, mm -hmm. um, which... You know, S14, a really, really great first entry into a streaming product for Rotel, and they've really knocked it out of the park with that RES 5000. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt it. And I like the whole idea of the um, of the balanced uh, signal coming out of the uh, the project turntable into the uh, into the phono preamp, too. I know, I, I remember Jeff Coates was giving us a bit of a, a bit of a, um, uh, sort of technical breakdown of, of the benefits of that and, and everything, and yeah, that seems very cool. Essentially, you're getting a higher a higher gain signal with a lower noise floor okay. out of it. So you're you're it's a just much cleaner but also louder signal um, than you would get with a standard unbalanced configuration. Right. While realistically not changing much on the electronics, a phono preamp is inherently a balanced signal. Typical phono arms will make that into an unbalanced before it leaves the table. Project is giving you the ability to access either one of those wiring configurations with these new new tables. Very nice, very nice, and it's a gorgeous looking table. It's too. a cool looking <laughs> table too. Carbon fiber, continuing the theme from uh, yeah. from the other room. There seems to be a lot of carbon fiber in this house. <laughs> yeah, we, we use it. We use it where we can. And then for speakers in this room, the Olympic yeah. Nova Three. Uh, yeah, those are. Very, very pretty. Basically, the heart of Sonus Faber. I think that's my favorite finish on on the Olympica Nova line. I really like. Uh, I really like. That's that's the walnut. walnut. The walnut. Yeah. Yeah. Really like that. I mean, if you have a choice and walnut is an option, and you're not choosing a walnut, personally, I think you've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just really love. This is my favorite. Yeah. Wood. Yeah. No, it's just a just a beautifully elegant, understated, but still kind of drop dead gorgeous finish all at the same time. How they get all those three together, I don't know, but they do it and they do it really well. S somehow both mid-century and modern yeah, at the yeah. same time. Very true. Very, very true. Oh, wow. Very nice system. And uh, The other thing we have in here also, as, as you're looking, is the HRS racks. I believe that's the yeah. EXRD model okay. uh, for the double wide mm -hmm. um, stack there. Wow. Also, insanely beautifully machined stuff. I know Mike from... Uh, uh, HRS has a aerospace background, and that really carries over uh, into what he's doing here. Um, really beautiful uh, racks. We have used them in a couple different places in the house. Very, very nice. Yeah, gorgeous system, and uh, and uh, definitely well, obviously a little more a little more attainable than the <laughs> than the first system we went through. Yeah, but, uh, it's 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 where we get you know a little bit reasonable. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously nothing in this hobby is excessively inexpensive, but. Right. We're in a, a reasonable configuration here compared to the million dollars downstairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no question about that. Hey, kids. So we are now in what's known as the disco room. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell why. Yeah, this this uh, this uh, slightly psychedelic array of multicolor lights on the wall kind of gives you an inkling. But, uh, but yeah, Ricky has... Uh, has brought us into this room to uh, kind of go over the system that's in here, and um, it's uh, it's decidedly not disco, if you ask me. But uh, Ricky, let's uh, let's uh, let's run with it and uh, let us know what's in here. 
Yeah, so this is very similar to the Jazz Room where we were looking at where we have a couple of different systems we can swap back and forth between. Mm -hmm. um, primarily for sources, we're using the MT2 and MCT500 uh, for analog and digital playback of physical media. Below that, we're going into a C53. Gotcha. Uh, so that's running the system primarily. Really amazing analog preamp, 8-band um, EQ. We use the DA2 DAC module throughout every system in gotcha. the house. Right. Uh, I really love the fact that Macintosh is building these evergreen products that have an upgradable. The only mm -hmm. part that is not going to be evergreen is upgradable. Right. Um, right. And the fact that we're now in the second generation, hopefully that means that we're going to wind up with, you know, DA modules for the history of, of streaming <laughs> as it goes on. Um, below that, we also have what is probably the most iconic piece of Macintosh gear that's right. ever been built, the MC275. Yeah, that's sweet. Very sweet. Yeah, I love looking at the, the glow of that down in the rack. Mm -hmm. And then that feeds a pair of the Sonos Faber Electa Amateur 3, which nice. nice is a decidedly magical little box. It is a crazy, sick, awesome sounding speaker. There's no question about it. And the, I mean, if anyone's never heard these before, I mean, besides looking, you know, positively gorgeous, they have a great, I mean, it's beautiful liquid sound to them, especially in this setup, but the bottom end is just, it's, 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 it's unreal that some, that those frequencies are coming out of speakers that size. It's, it's, <laughs> It's remarkable enough that I recently bought a pair with my own money for, for my apartment. So Damn you. <laughs> yeah. Damn you. <laughs> but man, yeah, I, 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 I could see why. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. And then the other thing we have in here is the MA-12000. So that's the crown jewel of Macintosh's integrated amplifiers. Right. Uh, tube preamp with the 8-band EQ. And then we also have a 350 watt per channel solid state power section on there. It's the auto formers. So mm -hmm. whether you run into two, four or eight ohms, you're always going to get the full maximum power out of it. Um, Standing. And it will move quite a bit of air. You know, 350 watts of Macintosh power is yeah. a lot of power. Well, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. And these, these little guys with the, with the bottom end they have can make very good use of it, I'm sure. I I, that meter definitely jumps all the way up in certain parts, for sure. When we hit those uh, those big bass drops on that Dead Mouse song that we demo with it. It's, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, really, really classy and, uh, and, and beautiful looking system. And uh, I, love the, I love the green from the, uh, from the tubes. Is that... That's one thing I've always wondered is that uh, I've never... Macintosh is the only... And this... Forgive my ignorance. Macintosh is the only uh, company I've seen with tubes that actually glow a particular color. What what causes that? Or, or it's that... it's it's LED backlit. So LED, the, that's the green is, the okay. green is once they're warmed up, but it will do a power cycle, and you'll see they glow orange while they're while they're warming up. Mm -hmm. And then once they're warm, they go to that classic Macintosh green. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. But man, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a heck of a look. It's very, very nice to see that thing. the reference room here at the House of Sound, and as you may or may not be able to tell, it is full of reference Macintosh goodness. So, Ricky, let us, let's go through it and, uh, and tell us what makes this room so special, sir. Yeah, so similar to all the systems we've looked at in the house, we focus on having access to any source that we would want to, to show someone. So, we use the MCD 600 for all of our CDs and SA CDs here. Mm -hmm the MT5 for any of our analog gear, and then we're streaming directly into the DA2 DAC module on this right, 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 preamp, right. Uh, which is our C2700. So you take a look, it's our vacuum tube preamp version of what we were looking at in the last room with the mm -hmm. uh, C53. Um, very similar uh, product, but like I said, going for the vacuum tube as opposed to the solid state. 
Um, from there, what I think is really special in this room is the MEN 220. Right. Uh, so we're going out from the preamp into that, and that runs room perfect from Lingdorf as our room correction in here. Okay. And if, as you take a look around the room, you notice we have all of these glass windows here. Very problematic. Don't have a wall on this one side. Yeah. And with the MEN 220, we're able to electronically correct for that. So it's affecting the timing in the space. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can use it for various EQ curves, although we typically will run it in the neutral position, just using the timing function. But that's this that's this unit's sole purpose is room correction, nothing else. Nothing else. It's yeah. just affecting the timing in a space like this where you have, you know, obviously physical restraints from doing it with just speaker placement. This really bridges that gap. Right. And it's pretty night and day um, in a lot of cases the, from between the bypass and the actual enabled. Wow. Um, cool thing about the enabled too is that you can have a number of different focus positions. So I typically set one up for the primary, you know, center of the couch, mm -hmm. and then I'll set up another one for like the chair over here, and then a global cool. as well. So when we have events, parties and stuff, we put it in that. That way no place is the exact perfect spot. Every place sounds really amazing. Understood, understood. Yeah, that's a good little box. And then from there we go out to our amplifiers. So oh, this yeah. is the MC2KW monoblock. This is the prior generation of the amplifier that we looked at in the Suprema system downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, but we had them in the house, so we decided if we're gonna keep powering the XRT 2.1s, um, this is the way to go. This amp, I believe, was in production for close to 13 years. Jeez. Really, really long time to, to be doing something right. It took us that long to improve on that technology. Oh, so, so like um, it's a cross between a power amp and a bank vault. I mean, look at it. Yeah, and it's a lot of cool things going on with why it's three boxes as well. We did talk about this when mm -hmm. we're looking at the modern one, but it's a, one of our quad balance amplifiers. So okay. what that does is it works the same way that any other balance system works, where we have an in-phase side and an out-of-phase side. So essentially we're producing a thousand watts of in-phase music, a thousand watts of out-of-phase music, and then they're combined right before output here to create two thousand watts of completely noiseless music. So I used to say that this is the quietest amplifier anybody builds at any sort of scale, although now we've made it a little bit better. So the 2.1 is now the quietest amplifier that anybody builds at any sort of scale. Nice. And then from there, out to the XRT 2.1s. Right. So this is our monolithic, monstrous line array speakers. Wow. So a lot of cool things going on there as well. Stunning. If you've got 2,000 watts going into your speaker, you really can't have a single tweeter. Not if you wanted to actually use the full 2,000 watts. Right. So we have 45 of them. <laughs> um, a, a lot of cool effects of having that many tweeters arrayed in the way that we have them arrayed. So this is a line array. So the smallest ones are the tweeters, and, and the, the, the next size after those are... are These are mid-range mid -range drivers. Right. Gotcha. Okay. And then there's also two larger yeah. mid-range woofers here, in okay. addition to the six woofers on the cabinet. Okay, I see. 80, 81 drivers in total per, per cabinet. Madness. Yeah, <laughs> and the line array makes them really, really good for long, deep rooms. They're also really good if you have really hard floors or high ceilings because of the way that they distribute sound really ignores those up and down barriers. They're kind of ignoring those reflections by virtue of being a line array. Understood. Probably incredibly low levels of distortion too, with all those drivers working simultaneously. Yeah, a lot of times, uh, like at hi-fi shows, we'll get people that'll come up and put their ear next to one of the drivers, like, "Oh, this this one's not working." Well, this one's not working either, and they'll go down the whole line. Is it? Well, yeah, they're only getting about a watt, it's like mm -hmm. headphone volume, but the cumulative volume of that is what fills the space. Right. Right. Absolutely. The whole the whole purpose of a line array. Very nice. Yeah. That's that's. Beautifully put together. And you were saying these are these are the they're they're uh, assembled or manufactured in Italy. The uh, the enclosures are is that right? The enclosures are manufactured in Italy. It, it's a, a Macintosh design, uh, but the actual cabinetry is uh, produced by our friends over in Vicenza. Oh, uh, those Italians. They they they're good at what they do. They they're very good at what they do. They really do. Nice. Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. Well, uh, thank you, Reggie. Let's uh, maybe we get a chance to hear these in a little bit. But uh, thank you so much for for running us through this. It's yeah, definitely. Thanks. The, thank you. Once again, thanks. Thank you guys for coming. Oh, it's a great time. Our pleasure. I mean, this uh, the, the whole the whole house of sound makes one one heck of an impression. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to uh, get a get a good uh, a good impression, a good glimpse of of what the, all the brands are about, this is this is the place to visit. 
Yeah, and really our whole goal at this house is to be able to show people things in a way that feels like they would be in a real home. You know, we don't have a lot of excessive sound treatment everywhere. It doesn't feel like a lab. It doesn't even feel like a store. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like to think it feels like some place where someone would live. That's the thing I was, I was noticing about each of the rooms, that it looks like, uh, that looks like a room that you, you could find in a very, a very nice home somewhere. And uh, not, nothing, uh, nothing outrageous, nothing you know, overly, you know, overly treated like you mentioned, but just a, a regular, regular, enjoyable, comfortable living space. Yeah. Very cool. Hey, everyone. Uh, so, in our travels throughout the, uh, the House of Sound, Ricky has brought us to uh, what some might consider the piece de resistance room. <laughs> Uh, this it, insane looking home theater that is just it looks like it looks like something in my neighborhood that I would go to 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 watch to watch a movie um Ricky I think you were saying something in the area of like 9.16.4 yeah it's a 9.16.4 um with quite a lot of Macintosh amplification power in those Sonos fiber speakers so Let's talk about what we yeah, have going on yeah. in here. And Let's do that. <laughs> really, to, to, to echo your statement of mimicking a what some would consider a fairly decently sized local home theater or local mm -hmm. theater. Mm -hmm. I live about 30 minutes away from here on the subway, and I don't go to commercial theaters anymore. I just come watch movies here. I can uh, understand it. I think this could ruin the body. So absolutely. But, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, so let, let's talk about it. So. Over in the corner, we have our large stack of Macintosh equipment. At the heart of wow. that is an MX-180 home theater processor. So that's howling all of the brains of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, we have 29 channels of amplification. There are nine of our MC-611 monoblocks that are powering the program speakers at ear level. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about those speakers here in a couple minutes. Okay. And then we also have 10 of our MI-502s. Those are each a stereo 500 watts per channel amplifier. Okay. 16 of those channels are powering our subwoofers. 16. And then the other four channels are powering our four Atmos speakers. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So let's talk about all of those speakers. Right. Um, these are all the Sonos Fiber Arena series the Arena speakers. Series. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, at ear level, we have three Arena 30s behind the screen. Those okay. are essentially an Amati in the wall. Right, 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 um, right. With one major difference, which really helps for theaters, they were a dual tweeter design. So you get a lot more mm -hmm. articulation in the dialogue and any of the front channel effects. Mm -hmm. So a lot more detail up front than we're typically used to, especially at the clarity that we're getting with the Sonos Faber speakers and the Macintosh amplification. Gotcha. The other six in the in the nine are Arena 20s. So these okay. are the in-wall version of the Serafino, so the little brother to right. the Amati right. and the, uh, the, that series of speakers. Um, there are six of those, like I mentioned, at ear level. Mm -hmm. Then we have our four Arena 10s in the ceiling, two flanking the front of the screen and two flanking the projector up here, which, by the way, is a, uh, a Sony GTZ 380 laser projector. Um, <laughs> that is a beast. It's a beast. That. It is, it is wow. quite a beast. And um, as you see, we're in yes. full, full lights mm -hmm. in the room, and it's basically like a TV and, and you're um, saying, what's the screen size? Let me 204 say? inches. 204 inch screen. Wow. From screen research. It's uh, it's big, and it's also an auto-masking screen, so depending on the program and we're playing, we can you know close it up right, okay. or open it up for either the 235 or down to 18. Depending on the aspect ratio. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. Um, and l so let's 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 finish up with these speakers. We we yeah. left out the subwoofers, sixteen of them. Absolutely, yeah. We can't forget those. So these are the Arena S15. Mm -hmm. uh, we have ten of them down below the screen, and then there's six at the back of the room, three behind each of these two seats you see behind us. The configuration is a little bit interesting. No movies are are shipped with a sixteen discrete tracks of right, frequency. Right, right, right. Um, typically, what you're getting out of uh, modern movies is a point four, which we're using in here. We have Four of the 16 are doing the 0.4 standard LFE track that comes out of the processor. But with the other 12, what we've done is we combine them with the program speakers. There's two that are uh, for each of the three fronts. Mm -hmm. And then on the, the back, we have one for each side, mm -hmm. one for each half of the rear, and one for each half of the ceiling. Gotcha. So in each of those directions, we have a full system that goes lower than what you can feel to higher than what you can hear in okay. each of these directions. That really gives us what we're looking for, which is kind of a shift of the paradigm what people are doing with home theaters. Mm -hmm. um, with this room, as we're about to experience here in a couple minutes, you really get the f a full rotational effect with 
once again, lower than what you can feel, mm -hmm. rather than what you can hear. It really feels like you're getting thrown around in the cockpit of an F-18, or mm -hmm. that the sandworm is coming at you when we watch the clip from Dune. Right. But on top of all of that, it's also fully high fidelity. Right? This is still Sonus Faber. Mm -hmm. These are still made in Vicenza, Italy. The amps are still the same amplifiers that we use in our stereo systems. Right, All of this is the quality that you're used to from the brand's Macintosh and Sonus Faber, but in a configuration that people aren't used to. And okay. we're, we're really hoping that the clarity and the realism and the immersion that you get in this space is something that catches on. Okay, yeah. very compelling. Um, so, in, in terms of the uh, in the processing for the the, the room correction stuff, again, mm -hmm. is it is it room perfect that's being used? The MX one hundred and eighty uses room perfect, okay. and so we use that for the initial configuration, and then the subwoofers are combined with the program speakers um, using an audio matrix from Viamp called the Tessera Forte. So that's okay. doing some timing just so that we can get the subwoofers timed perfectly to the uh, LCRs to get rid of any phasing issues. Okay, gotcha. Um, but there's no DSP going on in there other than the room perfect itself. Understood, understood. Wow. This is, <laughs> it's just, it, it just, it's kind of flabbergasting <laughs> what's what's in this room. So, um, yeah, I, this, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, hearing it, hearing a demo or two and, and seeing a demo or two in here. But uh, this, um, this, this just, this looks like, this looks like a neighborhood theater. I mean, it looks like a neighborhood theater, the size of it, the feel of it, the whole, the whole nine yards. Just a bit more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, definitely much more comfortable seating, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and the company's better, too. So the it's company's just, better, too, yeah. it's it's uh, Always enjoy hanging out with you. Yeah, same here, same so, here. So, uh, I mean, why don't, we, why don't we throw a movie on? Sounds like a plan. Thanks, right. sir. Let's do it. Setting time to target, two minutes, 15 seconds. 2.15, that's impossible. Final attack point, Mavericks inbound. Thank <laughs> you.